Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, is Logan. Harry Tay Logan. Uh, you ask this question every week, and I always like, what did I, what am I supposed to say to this? I'm good, Jordan. That's I'll what you're supposed to say. It. Nobody cares yeah. if you're bad. Nobody cares. <laughs> or not, I care if you're bad. Feeling great. Yeah, I bad. Well, I mean, I'm not feeling great. I can tell you that. I was up till midnight last night. Yes. Um, that's old for grandpa here. Um, grandpa stuff. I'm not usually. Yeah. <laughs> you you are much better at handling the late nights. Like, I, re, I know I'll get texts from you, and I answer them in the morning. And I'm like, dang, Jordan was up late. Because you're like a night owl. I'm usually up till one. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Because if I if I stayed up till one, I'd be dead. <laughs> I'd be like, God, oh, this is not fun for me. Yeah, I don't know. I guess because I can kind of I I can operate on like six hours. Now, if I'm working Lucky. from home the next day, like I can stay up till one easier because I can sleep for seven hours and then wake up. So it's still like a normal sleep time. Yeah, it's just with all of this stuff that we're doing. The million podcasts I have, getting ready for yeah, was... getting ready for the baby and stuff. It's like, uh, when I sit down to finally relax, it's like ten o'clock. Yeah, and then it's like, all right, do I really want to go to bed in an hour? No, I'm going to go to bed in three, and I'm going to relax. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question for you. Are you are you are you going to be one of those dads that uh, that forces fandom on the kid or? If he comes home and says, you know what, Dad, I want to be an inner Miami fan. Are you, are you going to allow that to happen? Yeah, he's out like of the house at that fan? point. Okay. <laughs> okay. I just I just wondered because I know, no, I don't I know, know you have different rooting. You have different alliances than your father does. But well, my dad. That is because my dad, like for a while, soccer wasn't easily accessible here. That's a good right? point. So like we were both kind yeah. of getting into it around the same time where you could watch games all the time yeah. so uh you know he was a dc united fan because it was closer there was no union that makes um, sense. i joined a little late in mls but like i had been watching it for a few years but i just never felt the connection to dc mm -hmm. that much so then it was once the union came it fit yeah. uh plus the sons of ben left a good impression on me because actually my first the, the first time I went to a draft, MLS draft, was 2008. And they were there in Baltimore, Sons of Ben, chanting, trying to get a team and stuff. So, like, that left a good impression on me. Um, and then when it comes to, like, Chelsea, it was literally Michael Ballack was my favorite uh, mm -hmm. player. So, I just kind of followed him to Chelsea because my first jersey was Michael Ballack, Germany, 13 uh, for 2006. But at that point, I don't know if my dad was that big into the Gunners because we just weren't like it just wasn't on TV anywhere. Like you had to have Fox Soccer. And that was on like digital cable. And we didn't really get that until probably 2008 digital cable. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Does so at that, that point, our allegiances were already struck at, at that point. So, right. um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh you know, my my dad has let me, uh, you know, have the the different rooting interests. But at that point, I was in high school. You know, it was already yeah. like so late. Um, yep. This kid's gonna be wearing like union gear uh, the moment he's born, so he's gonna be stuck with it. Same thing with O's I'm, and Ravens. Yeah, I'm just you know, yeah, you can't. Oh gosh, like I, I mean, I know. Your your rival rivalry runs deep with Red Bull and them. Um, oh, I just <laughs> to, to you and fans it does, but like look. so not Jordan's a yeah. They're not, not a like big a, threat. No, they're not a no. big threat. I don't really care. Yeah, you're not really into the the only rival that I've ever heard you talk bad about are the the AL East teams and the Yankees and the Red Sox. Yeah, like you it's actively Taylor's. dislike them. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But I don't know. Soccer, MLS has had a hard time with that, I think. is They do have rivalry week, but I, I do think there's a lot of teams that they're okay with each other. Like I, Some some I rivalries, wouldn't... like I feel like what Union and Red Bulls are, are like, oh, yeah. we're a Philly fan. And Eagle, yeah. like the, the Eagles and Giants are enemies, so we're enemies. Um, yeah. Same thing with like why they don't like DC. It kind of feels like, well, the, the Commanders and the Eagles are enemies. We're enemies. 
there it like for me like this rivalry would hit more if like the Red Bulls had been more consistent. Uh, I know like they've had a lot of playoff appearances, but I mean like winning actual cups at at the expense of us and like we had a great playoff match one of our well, I think it was like our first victory, right? Which was 2019, I believe in the playoffs and it was uh us coming from behind to beat the Red Bulls and that was a big thing. But I don't know, like they just don't really feel like a real rivalry. NYCFC does. And I will call them that. Because uh like, remember that game two years ago when, like, our uh, trainer is, like, getting a red card? Yeah. Oh, that yep. stuff was legit. And so is, like, our Cincy rivalry. Like, those feel more legit. So, no, I, I consider them more rivals than the Red Bulls at this point. Yeah, I think El Clasico might be. And them in, in Portland and Seattle, I think, are the big two that off the top of my head that I can think of. You mean El Trafico, right? Because El Clasico is Real That's what I meant. Barcelona. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> Sorry, stop naming your rivalries after the other countries. After the other places, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too close. Uh, but we are here today to dive into match day three, technically two. I want to say, I, I saw other people getting upset about this like I yes, was. Yes, Because it is stupid. Yeah, it's, it's stupid. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, When you have... It, match week. Somebody said the yeah. week should go. Match weeks go from like Tuesday to Sunday because yeah. Tuesday is when they'll sometimes fit in another game, or Wednesday they'll mm-hmm. fit in another game, like they did for week one. There's no reason for that to be called match day one and two. <laughs> That's that, true. Because that means technically Saturday and Sunday should be different match days if Wednesday yeah. counts. Right. Yeah. So we're all in and this. It's... We're all in this mess just because they wanted to have first kick on Wednesday. Yeah, people will, and people come after us on Twitter a little bit too. They're like, "Oh no, you're wrong. It's match day two. I'm like, no, it's it's match day three, which is really funny. I did that to had, you, Logan. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I know. I've had people come after me. I'm like, no, like seriously, MLS has been calling it in their official press release. It's match day three. It's match week two, and it's really funny they call it match day three, Jordan, because you had Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday. So technically. This would have been match day four, which makes no sense because this is the fourth day there's been matches for MLS. Right. right. And then match day five would have been Sunday. It doesn't, it, it's so stupid. Why don't we just call them match weeks? That's what they call them in Europe. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't understand. Here we are again, why, making things more complicated. Why don't, yeah. Why don't we just call it? <laughs> this is where you get messed up when you have like one uneven number of teams. So you have Vancouver yes. who had played zero games until this week. And then you had yep. Miami with two and RSL with two. Mm hmm. Uh, okay. So let's, let's dive in to this week. And you know what I actually want to start with? Not the first one you have listed here. I want to start with RSL yeah. LAFC. Okay. The snow match originally scheduled to kick off at noon mountain time, which was, uh, that was 2 p.m. That was like, Eastern time. What was it? Yeah. 2 oh, PM it was Eastern two, time. right? Yeah. It was two. It was and then it got line up four. Yep. Yeah. And then they started and played for like four minutes. <laughs> yeah. Because originally it was high winds. All right. So yes. let me tell you, I was not following this game at all. All right. So two o'clock, I turn on Minnesota Columbus. I'm like, this is the one I want to watch. Then I see delayed high winds. I'm like, all right, great. I don't have to worry about that game right now. Minnesota Columbus ends. I turn on the LAFC game and they are playing and they, immediately the lightning strikes. And I'm like, what are the chances as soon as I turn this game on? <laughs> so I walk away because my wife needed my help with something. So I'm like, all right, let me do this and I'll come back for Miami, uh, Orlando. That was the game of the week for me, Miami, Orlando. How wrong I was. And then I go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot then of disappointment. I go, so I come back upstairs and it's still off from the lightning. So I'm like, all right, let me flip over to the next game. Then, so I'm like, high wind lightning. Right? No mention of snow yet. Then, in the middle of this game, I get highlights of the RSL LAC game, and it's like 10 feet of snow. And I'm like, what? It was high winds and lightning. When did the snow come? 
<laughs> it was like all of Mother Nature decided to show up to the RSL game. So uh, what I want to ask yeah. you, yeah. right? Do I like snow? I don't know. Terundolo comes out and says, it's an absolute joke that yeah. we had to play today. It was one of my worst professional sporting events I've ever seen in my life. I feel terrible for the players that we put them through this. The game could have and should have been called off, in my opinion. It's a disgrace we had to pay uh, play. By the way, today he was fined 10K for that remark. Yep. I don't know. I agree with him. I agree with him. We're in week two. Mm -hmm. Match day match day three. We're in week two of the season, okay? And this game did not have to be played. I don't care who won or lost. Watching this game and seeing them, this is an injury risk. How high the oh, snow yeah. was, this is higher. It looked worse than the Costa Rica-USA game from like 2014. Yeah. Like this game looked like an absolute mess. And I just, I love it. I love snow games. I enjoyed watching the highlights of this game, but if I'm a player on it, I'm like, look, we're not pressed up on schedule right now. <laughs> Why are we playing this game when we already had two delays and then the snow comes in? This is not the last week of the season. We don't have to get this game in right now. I just don't get it. Yeah. Um, it is interesting because Pablo Mastroeni uh, was quoted now again, this is one person's take on what happened. It probably actually was not necessarily 100% accurate, but this was his take. I had a conversation with Steve and the referees before the game. At that point, we were all on the same page. The, then you decide to start the game when it's snowing. There's little you can do. As the game wore on, it became less like a soccer match, and it wasn't uh, the most desirable conditions for either team. But again, the winning coach... Um, there were players, I think Diego Luna was quoted in saying that it was up to his knees. <laughs> I was like, how do you play in that? Like the ball, it just sticks. And if you watch like Gomez score those goals, like it was wild to watch because it was such on like skates. He was, it was like they were moving in slow, slow motion, motion because they didn't want to fall. Yeah. It, it was awful. Yeah. I can't imagine it. And especially with the game so heavy in your feet and, and how, injury um, prone you become when it is slippery and you're just sliding around on those metal cleats uh it just yeah this was a it was a bad idea i think jordan after the first after the lightning happened and it started to really come down they should have just called it and said you know what we got 20 minutes in we'll continue from this position at right. some other day and usually what they'll do the leagues what they'll do is they'll move that game towards the end of the season or at least when they've got a break from League's Cup, like if, if they both got a break from League's Cup, they would just play it. They would resume it. So I don't know why they decided to, or maybe in an international break they would play it. But, yeah, I don't know why they risk uh, player safety here. And fan safety. It and week two. Issue. You know, yep. like I said, it's not like I can understand if it's the last week. Yeah. You know, week 34, match day 57, whatever they're going to call it. Yeah. I understand, like, if they're like, man, we, this is a special game. It's about seeding. We got to get this game in. Let's do it. But week two, I just don't get it. Um, do you think it would have been different with, with the regular refs? Do you think it had anything to do with? No, with I don't. I think, I think these are league yeah. decisions. So I don't, I yeah. don't think. I, I think fining him for this is dumb too. I, I don't know. That was a great. That was a great quote. I mean, like, what else do you want him to, to say? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was watching highlights before I saw him say that, and I was like, why are they playing this game? <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I, I get that they're, like, trying to, I don't know. I think when you find stuff like this, it's it's kind of dumb because this is what I want. I don't want, like, Trundolo to come out, but, well, we gave it our shot and uh, just couldn't get it done today. I'm like, that's the most boring stuff we hear every single week. Yeah. Give me the good stuff. I will say, though, this adds a little layer to uh, their next matchup against each it other, does. I think, because they're going to be uh, maybe a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Um, LAFC, anyway. 3-0 loss. They played, yeah. Marcel's really good. <laughs> they, they, they've a uh, Chicho Rongo score. Got to do some Snow Angels against his former. That was fun. Yeah, and he's like, I couldn't, I couldn't do Snow Angels in LA. <laughs> so That's why he came like, to RSL. Yeah, he's like, I love yeah. playing in the snow. <laughs> but they look good, man. To, to I know it's snow game. It, it's hard to tell. It really yeah. is with this yeah. with this type of game. But 
LAFC haven't been too, too impressive, right? They beat Seattle, who's still struggling to score. Yeah. And they've... Uh, Lost RSL. They lost RSL. They've only played two, right? Yeah, they're not one of the teams that have played three. Um, so at this point, you know, looking at the uh, the supporter shield, you know, everybody thought it was LAFC and Seattle going to be at the top for the West anyway. It it may not be, it may not be that, right? I know it's a hot start to the season, but Portland and LA and St. Louis and RSL and Minnesota are all above them. They all have four points topsy-turvy in the west um okay anything else about this game uh pablo pablo ruiz uh went on instagram and announced that he's out uh, yes that's right due to a torn acl uh that he suffered in training and now that's two straight season that he's missed the whole season where it's that's too bad man he he had really he turned a corner i thought and, and it was playing extremely well when he went down um I think they were really looking forward to seeing what he could provide with this team because I think this team's pretty good. I think it's it's becoming one of the top teams in the West. So, okay, uh, Minnesota had their late equalizer versus Columbus. So I, I know during this game, you were tweeting a lot about how great yeah. Columbus was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they kind of look like vintage Columbus of last year, where they gave up some points. Right. Um, yeah. In the second half, they first 20 minutes were dominated by Minnesota. I was actually really impressed by how they looked. They just couldn't just couldn't score crew score later on. But then we get uh, Tani Oluwashay, if I said that right. I did. I did the I followed the guide that you <laughs> Yeah, we get the media. We get the media guide. So it's yeah, I think it's Tani Oluwashay. Is how oh, okay. It. Uh, it's 90, just shady. Ninety plus five minutes, and this this goal was this goal was really great. Uh, mm. Like he kind of like the announcer says, goes away from goal to like turn around, and you're thinking yeah. like, what is he going to do here? And then he just blasts it in, like curves it in. It was really great. Yeah, it, it, it you know whose goal it reminded me of uh, later in the night, Ali Bedoya. Like I thought they yeah. looked pretty similar it, it the way they were similar, kind yeah. of falling backwards, and they both went. I think it was left foot. Late equalizer. Yeah, for both of them, it was yeah, snuck it in back behind the keeper. It was great. And again, Minnesota Places without like... any Reynoso, Halong Wayne, Laud, Fragapane, none of those players, and they draw MLS Cup champs. Like I said, they have four points. That's their fifth in the West right now. Um, because they have a one goal differential. The, the teams above them have two and three goal differential. That's the only reason why they're uh uh they're high uh, they're lower than um the teams above them. But uh they've only played two matches while RSL, who's at above them, as we know, have played three. So actually Minnesota off to a really great start here. Uh, when we we did not think that was going to happen, but I will say, I, I'm I'm still not bought in on this Minnesota team because I feel like they did this under Heath a lot too. Where where like starting the season, they're like whoopee, it's a new season, we're having fun, and then it's like that summer crash where you're like, we haven't won in 15 games, and you're like, what? You know, like that is yeah. kind of like what the kind of some of the stuff they've gone through. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it changes under the new manager and if he can kind of keep them above this line. And as they get some of these players back, if that really helps elevate them to be a team in the, in the top of the West that I think they should be not like maybe squad wise. I think squad wise, you could say so, but I think Minnesota is one of those teams that has like just such a great fan base, um, a great stadium. Like they should be taking advantage of that market. They should be taking advantage by actually being a competitive team. And I think with them moving on from Heath, they have a better shot of doing that. So I'm rooting for you, Minnesota. I may have put you like really low on the, on the predictions, but I, I am rooting for you. I just feel like I'd be, uh, don't want to get hurt again by by thinking you guys are going to be good and then you guys suck. So uh, jury's out. 
jury's out. Yeah, I, I I think you're I think it's warranted to be hesitant about this team because of what they've done in the past. And you don't know what Eric Ramsey is going to provide for the team. And I will say this though, like I, I think without Reynoso, without Elon Wayne, without Lud and, and Fragapane, I thought they looked pretty decent. They they uh controlled a lot of it. Um the crew, I think created a lot more chances, but I think that's what you get when you've got a lot of those attacking players from Minnesota, not being able to link up with some of the attacking players in the forward positions like Pookie. So I don't know. This is, it was a hot team at the end of the season last year. I think adding in Reynoso back in and where he'd been playing at a, at a good clip with Pookie with the long Wayne, who I thought came a long way with Robin Lud, who's, you know, one of the stars in this league. I think he got something in Minnesota's attack. Now, defensively, I don't know what that looks like. Dane St. Clair has not lived up to expectations in the past, but he, he does seem to be a little bit better this year. So, I don't know. You're right, Jordan. I think there's a there's a huge question mark in Minnesota because we just don't know how this team – it could bounce either way. Like, this team could be one of the top competing teams in the West, or this could be one of those, gosh, what is up with this team? Like, they, they've got some good star talent. Why can't they put this together? So, interesting. Nope. No, no worries about the crew, right? I feel like this is just one of those. It was a away game. Away game, yeah. Yes, you kind of gave up a late lead again, uh, but as you've shown last year, you can get over that and win the cup. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like you can't really fault that. I would, if I'm a crew fan, I wouldn't get too upset about this or anything. I think yeah. we'll still be okay uh, most of the season here. My hesitancy too is, is any team, even though they haven't competed yet in Concacaf they're still preparing themselves for CONCACAF. So I, I just, I don't buy teams that are struggling right now uh, in, in leagues play. And, and what I, I we'll just... say too, because most people will listen to this tomorrow, we're recording it uh, on the 6th. As New England's beating Alabama. As New England's, <laughs> yes, is winning 2-0 right now. Uh, so maybe I picked the wrong team on that CONCACAF episode. <laughs> you can go listen to that. But uh, the... The Columbus Houston game is tonight, uh, in about an hour after we're done recording. So by the time we're done recording, I'm going to be putting that on to edit this episode too. So while they haven't played yet as, as of recording, they will play tonight, uh, by the time you listen to this. So, um, don't be like tweeting us being like, you said Columbus has not played at CCC, but they did. <laughs> but yes. Before we, record, <laughs> after we record it. Um, Okay. Let's move on to. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, I know we hinted, <laughs> we hinted at it. We hinted at it on the uh, uh, the Concacaf Champions League episode. Because mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, Concacaf Champions Cup. We talked about it on that episode, uh, which we put up Monday, so you can go listen to that. Um, it. We don't really talk about the league results. We're just solely focused on what happened in the previous round and what's happening in the round of 16 and previewing those games. Most of those first legs are going on this week, legs two going on like the following week or two. Um, so uh, we thought that'd be easier than like trying to fit that in this episode. And then timing wise, it worked out perfectly because we weren't available Monday. So then we would have missed being able to talk about it anyway. But you were very confident about, confident about them, uh, Orlando, going into Tigres. I brought up mm -hmm. on there, I, I wasn't so sure because of this game that we're about yeah. to talk about here, which is Miami 5, Orlando 0. <laughs> Man, this was this was a rough, rough watch. Uh, I, I think people know, not just not because of you, Logan. Yeah. But I think people know I have a soft spot for Orlando from even before we lived there. I, I remember watching. Um, this is going to sound crazy. I remember going to Royal Farms to pick up a sub, come home and watch MLS preseason with my dad in the basement. And I had to plug in my laptop to the HDMI, right, to put mm -hmm. it on the TV. Yeah. Old and school. we're watching a, a tournament at Y World of Sports in Disney World. Yeah. And I think Orlando was playing in it as well as like a USL team. And they had like DC and like Philly and all these other teams. And I remember following them. I remember following Orlando when they were a USL team with Dom Dwyer and they were winning mm -hmm. USL. So I 
and Rich gave me when we lived down there a scarf of the uh, in 2013, a, a scarf of the USL side before that with the yeah. new lo- with the old logo that that you now rock on the jersey. So I have a soft spot for them because of that. And uh, then we lived there in 2015. I went uh, in 2013 and 15, but 15 inaugural season. I went to their game against Toronto. I, me and Matt went. Yeah. And Matt went with you yeah. again uh, this year. And it was a lot of uh, a lot of fun. They lost that game though, and it's just like the the vibe around Orlando was huge. Like people were getting the free magnets on their car from a car <laughs> wash in 2015. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Um, so it was a tough watch for me too. Uh, you know, my friend Dave is also an Orlando fan, so you know, I was texting him about this too. Uh, Because he's also a huge Barcelona fan, so he loves you know Messi and Suarez and stuff. So he's kind of conflicted with conflicted there, yeah. But he stuck with Orlando. He didn't jump ship. Um, So this was a tough watch, just because I we we were both very high on Orlando, Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people were. I'm worried they're not going to be able to score. I texted you this last night with the Concacaf game, but I was like, are we worried about them not scoring because? They've only scored against Calvary. They have not scored against Montreal. They did not score in this game. Uh, even when Miami is kind of putting their foot off the pedal, they didn't really score. Uh, they didn't score in the, the the first leg of this Tigres game when they had tons of chances, it felt like. I don't know. I'm a little worried. I, I know that they have to work in Muriel, right? And, and that's mm-hmm. going to be something that has to has to happen. I don't know. I, I'm kind of worried about them. Five nil was an embarrassment. Uh, and it was all, it happened all very quick. It was like what four nil before half or something. It was insane. Yeah. I, and uh, this was easily the worst game I've ever seen them play. And Oscar Perea said that, you know, we've got to be better. Like this is not acceptable by any stretch of the mean. And, A rivalry game. Yeah. That's rough. Oh yeah. That, that they weren't up with. Yeah. For, and arguably the best you know i think the best starting 11 that you know this league's seen on paper whether that plays out we'll see but i think the biggest thing here was they were just so sloppy and once it got down to two nil it became a road show like it became the Messi and suarez show and there's not much you can do to stop that once you're down two nil once you go down three nil under 30 minutes it was like okay this is going to turn into a circus and it did um i Last night too, I was thinking about this. Like, what's what's going on? Like, what what can the team do to create better chances and possibly create something different? And I think, honestly, it starts with Oscar Pereja looking at it, this team, and going, you know, maybe that double pivot doesn't necessarily work for this team because I don't think they will lack creating chances. I think they'll lack in the sense of like they need more attacking forces going forward. And I think a double striker would make more sense because they've got three strikers on the roster. And until Duncan moves on, you've got three top tier, I think, talented strikers. I think Enrique is a really good striker when given the chance. Muriel's going to figure it out. And you could see him starting to slowly figure it out yesterday, how to play with this team. The other thing too, I think that fans will probably point to as far as Orlando is concerned is like, well, yeah, they're not scoring goals and, and they're not creating as many chances as you would like. But you also have to remember that every other match, it's been a mixture of, so it's this off of like Martino Ojeda and Duncan play together and then Nico Ladero and Muriel have been playing together. And then every once in a while they'll flop them. And so I, I think that's a big issue is not having a consistent number 10. And Martino Ojeda, I think has played well enough to deserve at least a spot on the on the field, but so is Nico Ladero. So I think that's where the issue is going to lie. I think it's going to be that number 10 spot that I think we highlighted in the beginning of the year when Pereira out left. Um, this team has lacked a, a number 10, creative number 10, since he, you know, Pereira was two years, three years ago when he was doing well. He kind of dropped deeper last year. But I, there, it was too many dumb mistakes, and you can't do that against this Miami team. Like, you cannot – we're used to in this league, Jordan, like you make mistakes, you lose two to three to nil. You, when you do this with Messi, you're going to lose 5-0. <laughs> like, it's just the caliber of player he is. And I'm telling you, people are like, oh, my gosh, Orlando sucks. But they're, Miami's going to do this a couple times to teams. And they're going to go, you're going to go, what the hell? Um, you forget just how good these two can be when they're going on all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, 
look, we we both voted for. Uh, well, I don't know if you voted. Did you vote this week? Did you not have the vote yet? No, but it would have been Suarez and Gomez would have been my okay. votes. So yeah, Suarez won Player of the Match Day, which I I did vote for. I also voted for Sean Johnson as my second because uh, he put on a great. That's a good shout. Yeah. Um. But. Two goals, two assists. T- tough to beat for Suarez, and he probably could have had a hat trick. Really, he was a little unselfish at times to to be able to pass it off and make sure the goal gets scored. So, everybody's saying that his knees were not going to hold up. He, he looks good. I mean, I mean he, especially he's been, this game. Yeah, he yeah. looked really good, and and he doesn't need to go ninety, right? No. Like if he can do this in like a half and then get subbed out, his knees will be fine. Um. I, I am a little worried about Orlando. They seem like really slow starters for for some reason in this Always league. Always have been. Yeah, uh, it's odd. It um, is. but this this like you, I think you said it kind of at one point uh, on taxi. You may have said this uh, a second ago, but just when it kind of gets to like three nil, anything after that's kind of like all right. Like you can't judge it too harshly. Uh, because yeah, you know, the the morale is gone at that point, but also it's like, what are you trying for? Three nil, you're not coming back. So it it is what it is. Tough uh tough game for Orlando, but yeah, Miami l- looks good, right? So they're also gonna be they transferred uh G uh Gene Malta, right? Yeah, John Monta um, and uh, DeAndre Yedlin, too. Yedlin. Who to, played in this Vincent. match. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. played in this match. He yeah. got shipped out Sunday, the day after this. Yeah. Because we were recording we were recording our CONCACAF episode when that mm-hmm. happened, and you might hear our reactions. Like I think it was live on there that we were uh, talking about it. But um, they're bringing in Redondo, uh, Fred- Federico Redondo, and uh, they are linked to another player as well. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, they're still making some moves. Uh, Gressel was great. Calendar looks good. It's hard to judge, though. Once you have Messi with a brace, Suarez with a brace, Suarez with two assists, it's like, how much can we actually judge uh, how how good, like, Drake Calendar looked? Because I, I don't think he had too much to worry about. Something I noticed in the, in the CONCACAF game last night, it felt like, I don't know how it felt for you guys there, right? But I could hear the fans like begging for somebody to shoot like 30 yards yes. out. And the announcer was yeah. like, they're asking him to shoot. He's like, there's nowhere to shoot right here at 30 yards yeah. out. But I, I felt like that's because they almost seem to like try to walk it in. Like they get to the box and they're like still trying to find a pass and, and instead yeah. of just taking a shot sometimes. And sometimes you just take a shot and hope for a deflection. Yeah. Like I'm sure nobody really thought that that um, Minnesota equalizer was going in, but he took a shot, right? Like sometimes you just have to take a chance, and I don't know. Sometimes I feel like Orlando's holding on and not shooting enough. It's something that, yeah, it's something that I think we you kind of watched last night. And, and Tigres, if you're going to beat Tigres right now, is the time they do not look good. Uh, they were, they've been, they were, they were actually really bad. Last night, Orlando just couldn't string anything together. They didn't look like Tigres of old, yeah. No, nah, it looks weird. Um, and and Geniac looks slow. Like, they just look really slow. Um, but Because uh, I remember going to the game last year, and it was like three or four minutes in, and there were like three shots on goal. Yeah. I was like, this is going to get ugly. Um, but it didn't. And But, yeah, no, I think, Jordan, but you're right. Like, I think Enrique has scored uh, from a really good position against Calvary. Um Nico Ladero, like, because they took chances. And Nico is somebody that will take a chance. And, and I think he's your starting number 10 because he looked great last night. Yeah. Um, he, he looked vintage, uh, Nico. But I think you've got to find strikers. And Muriel did something last night that I don't think many of the strikers had been doing. And then Duncan comes in and started doing the same. Yeah. They were much more aggressive from shooting out from around the outside of the box, which sometimes you got to do. And, and you, you know, Duncan's not going to beat you because he's not super quick. Muriel's a little quick, um, so he'll get in behind. And then Enrique does the same thing. But I think that's the thing that they're going to have to try to figure out is who does Nico learn, you know, work best with? And last night I thought that was Duncan McGuire, to be honest with you. Like I thought when Duncan came on, yeah. it felt more of like 
Duncan's going to at least get you in really dangerous positions. Tons, and he's so it, it strong. Felt, yeah, it felt like they were getting in a lot of positions with, with Duncan yeah. on there, but then it just time ran out. Yeah. Time ran out. Yep. What was Matt's thoughts of the game? Uh, Yeah, so like, I, I think it, you know, he goes, I, I don't, I haven't watched him long. You know, I'm a new fan. And he's yeah. like, I think the biggest thing for him, he, you know, he talked a little bit about the fact that like, they just seem to be missing that extra pass at the, at the end where it's like getting to a dangerous spot where nobody's running in behind the line. Like yeah. there were hardly any, Jordan, there's hardly any balls going over the top of the defense. Like that's something that Orlando should be doing with the, with the quality strikers. They've got three really good, I think starting caliber strikers uh, in their, in their team. And you know, they, they just, they look so dead sometimes trying to get the ball to them. And some of that's Facundo Torres. I will say yeah, like some, he was really bad last night too. Like, I thought he wasn't very good. Just not getting any kind of passes or service into the box. Uh, by the way, New England 3-0 right now. Uh, That's insane. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dallas-Montreal. Uh, Montreal, uh, th- they beat uh, Dallas uh, 2-1. Um, that, comes as a, that comes as a shock, doesn't it? It's yeah. in Dallas. With all their good players playing again. Pomichol was back. Yeah. Ferrer, or Ferrer was back. What, Joseph Martinez uh, scores? Yeah. Musa, yeah, that was Musa a scored. Goal. Yeah, he did. Right? Score. 45th plus one to yeah. equalize it after an early goal by Montreal. And then Joseph Martinez scores. And yeah, you're, look, you're looking at a 2 1 victory by Montreal. Um, And, and they're, what? They're starting the season with five straight on the road, and they yeah. already have four points. That's nuts. That's a great start for Montreal. Don't know if they'll keep it up, but four points away from home to start off the season. That's great. Now they do have Miami, uh, Chicago, and DC. They can they can get another four points out of that, honestly. I think they could beat Chicago and draw DC. Yeah. And you're looking at eight points out of like uh like five matches that that would be a great start for them yeah not to that's get ahead of that but no but that's above that threshold of that one per game right that, yeah the teams always talk about you want to average at least a, a point a game on the road and you'd like to be a little bit better if you're a playoff team but man that's a good start you got to be on their press conference before this game what, what? i did tell us yeah. about that yeah so uh i talked to nico and i wanted i wanted to know how he would implement jesus in and around petar musa because petar musa occupies pretty much all the spots that, that Ferrer is going to occupy. So I, I asked, and, you know, last year they did have Ferrer kind of as a second striker, number 10, and I think he's perfectly suited for that role. But I just wanted to see what Nico said. And, and Nico said, you know, ultimately he is more interested in, and I thought this was a really interesting comment, Jordan, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. It was, his comment was, I like to try to collect as much talent as I can and if you've got a lot of good attacking players and a lot of attacking talented players, you can find a system in which this works and you can get all of your players in on the pitch at the same time if you just look at the player and personnel that you have, which you and I have talked about multiple times of get them on the pitch and figure out what works. <laughs> we usually talk about that with the U.S. Men's National yes. Team, right? Yep. But we, we talk about it with with uh, club teams too. When, when they come in and try to say like, look, we're going to rock a 4-3-3. But you have the players that instead are best suited for a 4-2-3-1, and you're like, well, why would we then change that, right? Well, at that point, I feel like the manager should adapt, not making the players adapt. And uh, that kind of sounds like something right there, right? Like, that's what it sounds like for Dallas. It's, all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. Just get the best players on here. And I feel like that's what you should do. Oh, we have these players that fit best in this system, or we have these players. How do I get them all on the field? Well, I get them all on the field on this formation. Is it the formation I usually run or would want to run? No, but that's how we're going to win games. Like, if I can fit in three really great players in this formation instead of having to take two of those great players out in another formation, why would I do that? just because I'm more familiar with that formation. You know, like th- that has been my biggest complaint about soccer coaches. Uh, I, you know, I, I feel like you just have to work with what you what you have at times. You're not going to be, especially in MLS, you're not going to be able to have like a, 
budget like Chelsea to go spend a billion pounds on uh, transfers to try to make it fit your style. You have to work with what you got. And uh, I, I do, I do agree with that line of thinking. Maybe it didn't work today uh, this week though. <laughs> yeah. But I think, but no I mean, I really do. I think, yeah, I think, I think Montreal has caught people by surprise. I think Laurent Courtois, Courtois has really, I mean, he was the head coach at Crew too when they when they won MLS yeah. Next uh, Pro, and he is a really good coach. And I think you see because of the youth development that the crew had, I think you see how good a coach he is. But man, they've shocked a lot of people. Like nobody thought that Montreal would be, at, you know, sitting in the in the position that they are currently sitting in. So it it, it really is a, it's a testament to what Courtois I think has implemented with Montreal and. You know, honestly, he doesn't have as much to work with with the, some of the other Eastern Conference teams do. But I, I think if he puts some of this stuff together, they could they could challenge for that wild card spot or that bottom of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to challenge for higher than that. I don't think. No. Um, I want to say New England four nil now. By the way. So it's that, pretty much over. Yeah, that like third goal. That third goal was a Shankalai penalty. Uh, so he's got another goal. I was going to say, does he have a hat trick? I don't know if it's tonight. Does he? Does he have a hat trick tonight? I don't know. I saw. I seen he doubled the score. I don't know if he had, had two goals. I, uh, I he's read got it real two. quick. He's got two. He two. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, he's been really good so far. Yeah. So they've got four. And that's yeah. pretty much it. Like that'll that'll do it. Like they're at home though, I'll... so just still don't give up a goal. You don't want to give them an away goal that that makes them yeah. go back to Costa Rica and think they got a shot. So yeah, yeah. But maybe put another one in. Don't give up another one and you're you're sailing. 5 0. That'd be great. Uh Sporting Kansas City won, Philadelphia won. Uh lots of controversy in here, right? So Philly did rotate their team, but also they the, the refs messed this up. All right. <laughs> and VAR could not overturn it because yeah. they they would have and they could have if they had looked at if the goal had come off of this, but because it hits off a Philly player and they award a throw in, then Philly got a corner off of that. And then they scored off of the corner. They can only go as far back to the corner to look. So if they had scored off the throw in, this would have, this would have got VAR. But because it got scored off the corner that happened after that, there is no way for them to legally like go back and change that. So I do feel sorry for sporting Kansas city fans, but also I kind of don't just cause uh, you know, it was a good point. It was a good, it was a good goal. We need it right then at that moment. Uh, Badoya scoring um, as, as he came on at like what uh, halftime with Gazdag and uh, Kai Wagner, or as some people might call him, Kurt Wagner, Nightcrawler. Um, they enter the game. But yeah, it it was like a 94 minute throw in that leads to the corner, that leads to the goal, and uh, they were not very happy in sporting uh, Kansas City at Children's Mercy Park. That's really all there was to talk about this game, though. I mean, it wasn't yeah. much that happened. It was the first goal, and then there was the controversy. Like the rest of the game was kind of like pretty standard stuff. Not not too much going on. I think it's a nice steal for a point with the incredible rotation. I think there were four starting players uh, on the Philadelphia Union side to not get three points against a bunch of the young kids. Uh, eh, that's not great. Um, it, they're they're surprising me. This is what you need to do when you're playing CCC. Yes, yep. you need to get points. They got a point in Chicago. They yep. got a point against Sporting, and now they've done. They, they got a nil nil draw at home against Pachuca, which gives them a shot in Pachuca. Now, yes, you wanted to steal a goal at home, so that way you have a little bit, but you didn't give up an away goal. So the way that they're balancing the season so far with the rotation and, and having no Elliott with the red card for leg one yeah. was huge. So Curtin's impressing me right now with how he has this team going when I feel like they've gotten another year older they're struggling a bit more, I think, to get going. Their defense wasn't as good. But remember, th this game, no Andre Blake as well in, the, in, in this uh, Sporting Kansas City game. Semla was in there. 
so yeah i mean uh just they're they're impressing me with like their they've come back in two games right they've played two the chicago game they had to come from behind they had to come from behind in this game they had to come from behind late in both of these games and then also juggle midweek matches i'm feeling pretty good as a union fan right now yeah i think you should i think the controversy they, aside <laughs> yeah well it happens um everybody has one of those calls every year but yeah i think i think what you said is right like i think having having the union rotate get a point with the young kids getting the young kids exposure in a very difficult place to play one of the most difficult places to play uh, I think in MLS against a, a team that was really good last year to end the season against the Peter, Peter Rumi side who should have taken advantage of the fact that you were playing a bunch of the kids. Um, yeah, no, I was really impressed with this. And without Andre Blake again, they keep yeah. grabbing points without Andre Blake. And that's amazing. Cause, and he's back now. So yeah. uh, they they should they they hold and guess what? They host Seattle at home yeah. without, uh, without De La Vega. So yeah they have a good shot here as Seattle struggled early this season as well with scoring. Mm -hmm. They have a good shot of, of picking up three points and, and catapulting themselves back near the top of the top of the East. That would put them with like five points if they can beat uh, Philly. I'm, I'm waiting to see if I'm getting my credentials uh, for that game or not. So that'd be great. San Jose LA Galaxy 3-1 Galaxy Paint Sill again just playing great. What was that a goal and assist? Yes. Just the goal, something like that. Anyway. Um because he was voted like uh I think he was like second or third in, in player of the week voting this week. I think so, from what I remember. I'm trying to pull up his stats. I thought he had an assist. That's why he was in the mix. Yeah. Yeah, he had an assist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's been great. He's been great, great for for LA right now. And LA Galaxy, the team that Logan is adamantly rooting against, they are in second <laughs> place of the West, along with another team that he's adamantly rooting against, the Portland Timbers. So okay, here's... first of all, <laughs> I'm I the only reason I would have been rooting against the Galaxy is because I think I picked them for the bottom of the Western Conference. If I can remember, you did. Correctly. You did. Yeah. Well, that's near the bottom. only. Oh no, that's mine. Yeah. Hold on, sorry. Yeah, you picked them 14. Yeah. I'm not actively rooting against them. Now, the, the people that ribbed me for the Portland side, you, you deserve a loss or two. <laughs> no, uh, I don't root against teams. Like I, I, I like to see all the teams succeed. I like to just see how the, how the pieces fall. I think that's the coolest thing about MLS. Now, if you're playing against Orlando, obviously I'll root for you, against you that game. But yeah. after that, like I've got no beef with Miami. Like I'd much rather see Miami succeed because then other players are going to get interested in this league. So having Miami be good is yeah, fun for the league. Yeah, seeing some wild, wild takes that yeah. uh, people wish Miami had never brought Messi over. I'm like, yeah, you guys are nuts. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Best player that's ever played, and you're wishing him out of the league. It just doesn't seem. I, I get like some of the company, some of the clubs have been very greedy with like um, ticket prices and stuff. That's a problem Nashville's going through right now for their lead, yeah. uh, lead uh, for the CCC. And Messi's not even playing in that one. They came out and said those players are getting a rest. So it's like, I understand getting upset about ticket prices for that. The club will feel that though. I really do think the club's going to feel that if nobody buys these tickets because it's too expensive and Messi's not actually there, they're going to have to start lowering those prices uh, for some mm -hmm. of these competitions because you you'd rather have people there than not there, right? Because what one of the things the, the league touts is the atmosphere, and uh, you got to stop screwing over your um, your base. You know, your, your yeah. uh, fans. Uh, but uh, Quakes, they lose. They, they have zero points out of two games right now. So a negative three goal differential. They're not feeling very good at the start of this season. Uh, all right. How about Toronto? They beat New England 1-0. Uh, yeah, John Herdman has kind of made a difference here at least enough to get insigne and, and the you know the whole rest of the team i guess interested in actually playing the game and, and doing well um but yeah i mean uh new england just dominated like the the, the actual 
possessions and shots and stuff, but Sean Johnson had like six saves and then they go down there and score a goal. And sometimes that's all it takes. And as Toronto, as much as they struggled last year, you take victories like this and you say, this is how we're going to win games right now. These are games we wouldn't have won last year. And that's important to know and important to think. Yeah, they look great. Um, I watched that whole game. It was a really interesting game um, because I, I thought New England had many a chances to, to equalize, but then Toronto always seemed to have the answer. Uh, it did seem like Toronto was the better team. And when Insigne plays like he does, and honestly, Bernadeschi was the biggest uh, surprise to me because he was flying all over the pitch and smiling and having fun. And that's something that we know wasn't going on with Bob Bradley's Toronto team. Like we know that he and Insigne had basically uh, formed a revolt against uh, Bob Bradley and, and company. And it, it caused a divide obviously in that locker room, but that seems to be gone now that Michael and Bob are both gone. And I, John Herdman, Jordan, you and I talked about how great of a coach he is and how great he was with the Canada, uh, Canadian uh, national team. And it's coming to fruition. I know you were a lot higher on them because of John Herdman. And, you know, I had some hesitancy because I thought that it could be a disaster um, with some of the Italian mess ups that were there. But, man, they both have turned a corner and look really excited to be here. And I was tweeting about this, too. I was like, you know, we talk about L.A. Galaxy and Paint Sill. We talk about Inter Miami and their players. We talk about FC Cincinnati. You know, we talk about Orlando. We talk about Union. We talk about, you know, some of these top teams that we thought were going to be good. Seattle. LAFC, like we talk about these squads, Jordan, but Toronto has had a really good team. They've just been sitting in the shadows. Like it's like they hadn't been out there playing their best soccer, but I think John Herdman's got them playing their best soccer. And it really helps that you have a goalkeeper like Sean Johnson. Yeah, four points to start the uh, season here, eighth place, because teams from second to eighth have four points. So, uh, you know, they're, they're doing pretty well. Um, Let's talk the other side of it, New England, because I got some heat. I got I got some heat uh, the past few days because I had, <laughs> I guess, a take that w- was wild for people. They they unveil this new uh, tradition of throwing this crate into the like onto the field area, right at uh, Gillette. And it has the team's logo of who they're playing against. And it's supposed to be like, this is the Boston Tea Party. We're throwing this into the water. I saw so many people say that this is very cringy, blah, 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 blah. I don't think it is. All right. I think this is really cool. Uh, Now, was it the best? No, there's some ideas here that they can workshop it. Putting some water or throwing it down in like smoke rises that make it looks like water. Uh anything that can make the, some people said have the crate break i saw some people say why isn't it in a real crate one a real crate's probably really heavy they're not going to throw a real crate i'm sorry they're just not going to do that they're going to hurt the person that's throwing it they're going to get sued that's why they throw this little dice box cardboard that just bounces but i think it's cool i wish i wish teams did more of the stuff that ties in with their city and before you say foxborough is not boston let me remind you that the kit that they are wearing this year is called the Tea Party Kit, a.k.a. the Boston Tea Party, a.k.a. what they are basing this tradition off of. They're also named the Revolution. Where does that kit name come from? It comes from <laughs> Boston. All right? So, yes, uh, it ties in with that. It is what it is. I like it. I'm going to be the Joey gif right now where he's eating Rachel's trifle and he's like, I like it. That's me right now when it comes to this tradition. And I hope they workshop it. I hope they make it better. But I I just don't see what's cringy about it when you have, if if people were doing this in Europe, they would love it. Oh, the fans will love it so much. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. I thought it was fun. Other teams are trying other things, and then it's they get fun. mad when you copy somebody else. Like when you're doing the, I forget what they call it, when you turn backwards and jump up and down. Charlotte does it, but also everybody in Europe does it. I know City does it. Yes. I forget what they call it. It's like that. I forget. But um, it, it is. It's like, okay, at least they're trying stuff, right? 
Uh, I think Nashville's got the really cool one with the guitar. And then I saw they were after, I think it was Charlotte that tried that this time. And the Nashville fans were mad. And I don't know. I, I Kudos to teams that try things. I, I love teams that just try things that are different. That's how, that's how uh, uh, Timber Joey, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, that that's how he got started. This is exactly it like, like oh. that. Now, of course, he's cutting a real tree. They would yes. say, well, this would be like him cutting a plastic tree. Yeah. But I mean, come on. It's cool. It's fun to try new things. And guess what? With this feedback, I'm hoping they make it better and not just say, OK, that failed. Don't do it again. Uh, get some input from the from the fans and try to make this really cool. Um, again, it's not like they're the, the Red Sox doing this. They are a team named the revolution, which started a lot with the Boston tea party. That That is like a cool connection. Use it, make it fun. I like it. Um, hopefully they do it again. Okay. Uh, some of the other uh, stuff that happened here, Charlotte is finalizing a deal to sign an Israeli winger. Leal Abada from uh, Celtic. So he would be a young DP. 10 goals, 5 assists last year for Celtic. He's got 10 caps with Israel. Um, CCC teams that played midweek over the last few weeks are now 2, 4, and 8 in MLS, and they have just 13 goals and 14 matches. Ben Teke was hurt in warm-ups for the Portland match against DC United. Um, so so that wasn't great. Um Really bad red card for James Hans against St. Louis. Uh, are we concerned at all about, yes, I'm going to call them this, NYCFC? Uh, <laughs> Don't call them that. I'm They're calling them that. The FC. <laughs> we go wild here, all right? I'm yeah. calling them no, 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 that's No, you can't say that either. That's MLS gone wild. We're, we'll trademark him too. Um, Jordan, they, they did they did release their stadium plans. It's called the Cube. It actually looks really good. I was really impressed. Honestly, I was, it gives me a little Geodis Park combined with lower.com, little TQ. Like, I actually like the look of it. I think they're trying it something. Right. Yeah. And I mean, might. like, it well, much. it's the screen, isn't it? You don't like the what? screen. You don't like the boxiness of it, do you? It's like, fine. It's, it's just, this is not how it's going to look. None of these That's renderings true. happen like this. This is, it's going to look worse <laughs> than this. All right. It just will. It's, a, it's like when you look at the, uh, what the athletics just shared their Las Vegas. Oh yeah. The, the Sydney opera, opera house. house. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's going to look like a worse version of that. That's yeah. That's true. I guess. I guess I was just giving them benefit of that. I will say though, soccer's easier because it's not as complicated. I think as some of these baseball ones that look, ridiculous. I just hope that it happens that they actually start getting working on this soon. So we can yeah. actually have them approval, in a good baby. stadium and not, in a, and not in a baseball stadium. Yeah. But are you worried about the team? Uh, yes. This team is, uh, I mean, they have zero, they have zero points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm worried. Uh, I'm more yeah. worried about them than the Revs, who also have zero points. Right. We're Atlanta, who has zero points. NYCFC, we were kind of worried about going into the season to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I look at people like, at the rebranding thing yesterday and people are like, okay, well rebrand the coach. Like those were the comments from NYCFC fans and like yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, I'm a little worried about them and just the vibes. This kind of happens sometimes though, when teams are getting stadiums, they, they tend to cut back because they're building the stadium and then they'll probably retool in time for the stadium. That's a good point. You know, like yeah, I remember when, uh, what, what, who was it before? I remember there was a time when a football team or somebody was, oh, no, no, it was Arsenal when they were building the Emirates, I believe. They, like, cut back on, on same thing with Tottenham. They had to end up starting, like, that's when they kind of started blowing it up so that way they could, because they also had to worry about building Tottenham Hotspur Stadium instead of White Hart Lane, which they were using before, so they started selling, like, you know, um, uh, like Gareth Bale, and they, they ended up not buying as many players, stuff like that, because they had to try to stay afloat with like the books that way. So I do wonder if that's maybe part of what NYCFC is doing here, where they're like, well, we're building this new stadium. We're not going to put as much money in right now, and uh, we'll just kind of re 
rebrand like you're supposed to do when you're struggling. Yeah. The pigeons. And Santi Rodriguez got into it with, with Cushing and staff uh, over on the sideline. He got pulled. James Sand lost his head. Like it just, it doesn't seem like it's going well in, in New no. York. Jordan. Negative three goal differential. They have yet to score. Atlanta is yet to score. Right. Orlando is yet to score. NYCFC has yet to score in MLS. Yeah. Atlanta's only played one match, though. We'll give them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're fine. Orlando has played two. Two. Yet to score. Yeah. Don't give them credit. All the pressure in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the Revs have scored. They haven't won, though. They're still set. They yeah. have two losses. Um, you were saying they looked good, Revs, a- a- against Toronto. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. In, yeah, they yeah, and they look good in, in Concacaf. Like they look really yes, good. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, four nil. Yeah, but I I thought that their attack look. Sean Kali looks like the the real deal, and he's been great. So once they get Dylan Barrero back, oof, that's a strong attacking force. Um. So we're, we're kind of running out on time. So let's go ahead and just breeze through these. Vancouver, Charlotte, 1-1. One, one. Uh, Tavares had his first goal in MLS for Charlotte. Um, Charlotte played pretty well after the 60th minute, barely kept Vancouver from doing much of anything. This was Vancouver's first game of, of, of the season, so they might take a little bit to get going. Cincy beat Chicago 2-1. Um Wait, are, are you kidding me? This is their first victory on the road? Yep. Yep. What? <laughs> I know. I thought it was weird, too. But yeah, Where did you read that? Is that in their press stuff? Uh, I believe it was in either their press or one of the articles, like uh, their uh, article online. Um, what? That, yeah. So wait, it's their first, earned their first major league event for the first time in club. No, that's not right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what did I write? That's not right. I don't know what I tried to like. I it must have been pulled off of something else. I don't know what okay. that is. No, that's not right. I was gonna say they've I, had to have win no. road games. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I was trying it's to Waters say. Killed winners last year. Maybe um, it was. Uh, I don't know if they trailed. I can't remember. I don't. I'm not right. even try to guess what that note is. That's right. Aaron Bupend, uh, Bupenza uh, made his first MLS start of the season. Um, we had uh, Shakiri had a PK. To equalize at one one, uh, Miles Robinson scored. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, th- there you go with that. Um, since he had most of the control in that match, Red Bull two over Houston. Houston had a, a lead, I believe, right? Yeah. And then Red Bull scored in the forty third minute, and then Lewis Morgan scoring in the in the fifty ninth. So Red Bull will continue their hot start. Uh, to the season. St. Louis beat NYCFC 2-0, and this is, you know, NYCFC starting with zero points in the season. We kind of talked about them enough. St. Louis is kind of back on the right path here, third place in the West in their second season right now, four points. They're tied for first, technically. Just need, because of goal differential and goals four, that they're in third, but you know, they're, they're still alive for that. Um, Colorado won, Nashville won. Nashville's been very disappointing. So is Colorado, but that's expected usually. Nashville's been more disappointing. And Portland 2, D.C. 2. Uh, this was Portland scoring 2-0, and I was like, man, this game might be over. And then in comes D.C. to fall <laughs> their way back. Like we all predicted. D.C., second place in the East, just like we all thought. <laughs> and then Seattle nil, Austin nil. That was the game I was watching, of course, at the time, and it was a nil nil draw. I was so excited for that match when it came up on the schedule, and then as time went on, I was like, I'm not so excited about this match anymore. <laughs> I really thought Seattle would win that game, but they yeah. they've had some trouble scoring, and now dealing with yeah, six to eight they're weeks. have some ma- major problems now. Now they have to travel cross country to Philly. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. be tough. All right, let's look at the conferences so far. Miami sits top of the East. Seven points. No losses. They have eight goals. Only given up one. We are worried about their defense. They've only given up one goal. Miami. 
DC sit second with four points, Columbus in third with four, Montreal in fourth with four, Red Bulls in fifth with four, Cincy in sixth with four, Charlotte in seventh with four, Toronto in eighth with four. Then you got Philly in ninth with two, Nashville in tenth with two, Chicago with one, Orlando with one. Those teams are in 11th and 12th place. Atlanta, New England, and New York City sit 13th, 14th, 15th with zero points. In the West, Portland, top of the West, four points. LA Galaxy in second with four. St. Louis in third with four. RSL in fourth with four. Minnesota in fifth with four. Then you have Dallas in sixth with three points. LAFC in seventh with three. SKC in eighth with two. Vancouver, after one game, is in ninth with one. Then you have Houston with one. Seattle with one. Austin with one. Colorado with one. Those teams are in 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. And then San Jose, bottom of the West, with zero points. Logan, if I'm going to throw it to you, if one of these zero-point teams are going to win the, the wooden spoon, who do you got? We got San Jose, I, Atlanta, New England, and NYCFC. I literally thought you were going to say the support shield. I was like, uh, No, they're going to win the wooden spoon. Yeah, yeah, they're going to win it. Um, out of the four teams with zero points currently – I'd say NYCFC, honestly. Uh, I think the Quakes will, will, will kind of right ship and get back towards the bottom of that playoff mix like they normally do. NYCFC, man, they just... I don't think they've got any exciting attacking players that I'm just like over the moon thrilled with, and I think that's part of their issue is just not having anybody that looks like they're going to be a dangerous threat going forward. They've lacked a lot of just discipline on the pitch and off the pitch. I think they've got some issues with no trust and and Nick Cushing. And I think that's, you know, once that sours, we've seen how that goes. Um, once he's out, I think they start to figure out what's going on. And, and I could see them pitching this as like, Oh, New York city is going to find uh, the next coach. You know, he's going to be the next guy. And uh, Ronnie Dyla supposedly is on the hot seat over where he is. I forget exactly which team he's with. So that might be a good hire back um, to kind of correct the ship and get ready for your new stadium. But yeah, Jordan, I, out of the teams, I think this is the team that I'd be most concerned with just because even with some of their attacking players that I think that they put out there, I think some of them are even in danger of not being there much longer anyway. So, yeah, I, I'm disappointed in what NYCFC have done uh, and continue to do. I'm kind of worried about San Jose. I don't know are you? Know. Yeah. 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 They had a hot start last year and then struggled, and now they're kind of doing the opposite. I, I worry if they can get into the playoffs that they continue to struggle at the beginning here. Uh, they'll have to reverse last year at this point. Have yeah. a slow start, have a hot finish. Yep. All right, so coming up this weekend, we have uh, NYCFC and Portland at 2 o'clock. Also at two, I don't know why they're doing two games at two o'clock. Stop this. One at two, one at four. Let's get this right. Why Why do I have to choose between two games at two o'clock and then nothing until 730? That's dumb. That's dumb. Okay, two o'clock, NYCFC Portland. Then free on Apple TV. And the reason they gave you this one free is because they thought this was not going to be a good game. But now we're looking at the standings and we're like, this might be good. Toronto, Charlotte. Uh, Atlanta is going to play their second game of the season against New England. That's at 730. That means one of those teams is going to have a point uh, at the end of the at, at the end of it. So we'll see at least one point. Somebody might have three. Columbus, Chicago at 730. That is also free. Uh, New York Red Bulls, Dallas, Orlando, Minnesota, Philly, Seattle. Those are all 730 kickoffs. Austin, St. Louis at 8.30. RSL in Colorado at 9.30. That one's free. Uh, LAFC, Kansas City at 10.30. And San Jose, Vancouver at 10.30. That one is free. Then on Sunday, we have Cincinnati, D.C. at 3 o'clock. Nashville, L.A. at 3 o'clock. Again, space these out. One at 1, one at 3. Like, come on. Miami and Montreal at 5. Any thoughts about that? Do you agree that they should space these out? I don't know why we're doing two at two o'clock and then nothing until seven thirty. 
Yeah, no, I don't like that at all. And I, I looked at the Orlando schedule today. They don't play a game before 6.30 Eastern time in MLS this year, I think. Which wow, sucks. so they're like, not I actually the like their afternoon time. games, yeah. Like, I actually like the afternoon games, and I, I agree with you. I think there should be 2, 4, and then 7.30. Gives you an hour and a half in between, roughly. So, Yeah, because the, the 4 o'clock one will end around 6, and or you sorry, have an yeah. hour and a half to yeah. relax. Why? Why do I have to have multi-screen on at 2 o'clock? Right. What's so special about 2 o'clock? Why are we doing 2 o'clock for two games? Yeah. And then nothing until 7.30. It's they did weird. it right, like they did it right, like week one. I think it was like two, four, seven. Mm-hmm. You're like, all right, this makes this makes sense. <laughs> and now this week they're like, nope, two two o'clock games. They tried to do that this Sunday when they did the, uh, or the last Saturday when they did the LAFC game with RSL at two o'clock at the same time, Columbus and. Um, Minnesota for week two. I don't understand what they're doing. This will be match day four, by the way, even though it's week three. So try figuring <laughs> that out. Uh, before we head out here, just wanted to give everybody an update that New England is still winning 4-0. So that's probably how it's going to finish by the time we're done this. Houston Columbus is playing tonight. Cincy Monterey uh, on uh, Thursday and Nashville, Miami on Thursday at nine o'clock for CCC, which we talked about on another episode we released on Monday. We also released our thoughts on the U S open cup format that was released on Sunday. So make sure you check that out and disagree or agree with us, whatever one you want to do. Uh, anything on your end, Logan, before we wrap it up? No, no, it's been, uh, it's been great having MLS back. I'm so excited. Because it, it really have. I think I think this year is going to turn out to be a really fun year. I'm excited to get it going. Further into the get out of the Concacaf, you know, like I love Concacaf, but I like to see when teams come out of that when everybody's firing it at all, yeah, uh, with all cylinders at each other. That's fun. Yeah, so I, I guess I'll plug some stuff here. Logan and I just, uh, as we've been doing every week, except last week, uh, been releasing episodes of our chronological Clone Wars watch over on our Star Wars podcast, Pod Awakens, uh, where we watch the Clone Wars in chronological order. Logan's first time watching it and uh, a rewatch for me. And then we discuss these episodes in batches about three to five episodes a week that we're talking about you can follow along with us on that um you know i've been uh we i just released an mcu villains draft over on to the infinity saga and beyond where we draft uh villains from the mcu exactly as it sounds like and then you can make sure to vote uh who had the best draft on that uh which you know, not much goes to the winner, but bragging rights. So I would appreciate if uh, you like my team. But we we don't tell you whose team is who on the graphic when we do the poll because sometimes people just vote based on name, and, and that's not fun. Uh, vote for the best team. Over on our Elseworlds podcast, which is DC Comics, we talked the new Superman suit. They released what the shield looks like on that by James Gunn. So we had a great conversation on that. Uh, over on Elseworlds, a DC fan podcast. That's about all of the podcasts that I am doing right now. Uh, I've been doing films for the very first time with Casey, and uh, we recently released our Mr. and Mrs. Smith episode. Uh, Not the TV show, but the movie with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. It was my first time watching that. I share my thoughts over there. That's it. Make sure on here, Stateside Soccer Show, you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, You can also rate and review us on Apple Podcast and Spotify nowadays. Uh, You can also leave us a review just letting us know how we're doing. Uh, We appreciate those. It helps more people find the podcast. Uh, Yeah, that's about it. Have a great rest of your week. We will catch you next time when we talk about match day four.